Hey, one of the most common questions students ask before they sit the speaking test is how long should my answers be in part one? The most common advice given is one or two sentences, but is that really the best approach? Is that what you should be doing in your IELTS speaking test? Let's find out. So to answer today's question about how long your answer should be in the first part of the speaking test, why don't we be a little bit scientific and work out exactly how much time you have on average for each question. So to be scientific, I need some glasses and now let's begin. So part one will last for five minutes and in that time you will have to answer a maximum of 11 questions. There'll be three questions about where you work or your home and then you'll be given two random frames selected by the examiner on two more topics and there will be a maximum of four questions for each topic. So if you think about it, that's a total of 11 questions. Now, in your exam, you may not actually be asked all 11 questions. You'll definitely be asked the three questions about your work or where you live, and probably you'll get through at least the first four questions or the first frame, but you might not get through all the questions. That's totally normal. It's not a problem if that happens, but let's imagine you actually do answer all 11 questions. We've got five minutes, so if we divide five minutes by 11 questions, that will give you, wait a minute, let me work it out, roughly 27 seconds per question. Right? Well, wrong. Because you see, part one doesn't actually start when the examiner asks you the first question about your work or where you live. It actually starts when the examiner says, good morning or good afternoon and introduces themselves to you. Then they're gonna ask you for your full name. They may ask what name you would like to be known as and then they're going to check your passport. They're gonna check your identity. And if you've got a very nice, funny old photograph, it may take them a few seconds to do this. So I would say on average, it's going to take the examiner about 15 seconds just to check your identity. So we don't really have five minutes for task one, we actually have about four minutes 45. Plus, it takes the examiner time to actually read the 11 questions. Now I'm not gonna waste your time doing this, but before I started recording, I read 11 questions as I would as an examiner, and it actually took me 60 seconds to read all of the words for 11 questions. So if we remove the 15 seconds for the identity check and the minute, which is the time it takes the examiner to read the questions, we are actually left with about three minutes 45 student speaking time. So if we divide three minutes 45 by 11 questions, now we are down to about 21 seconds per question. So if we're being very scientific and very logical and we want to speak for the full five minutes, our answer should roughly be around 21 seconds per answer. So why don't we give this a try? I'm not gonna do all 11 questions, that would be too much. Why don't we just take one frame of four questions and I will answer those questions using one or two sentences. Or in other words, using the advice that most IELTS teachers give for speaking part one. Are you ready? Let's have a look. Let's talk about traveling by car. Do you often travel by car? Oh, not very often. Um, that's really because I don't own my own car. So I probably only take a taxi about once or twice a month. Do you prefer sitting in the front seat or the back seat of a car? Definitely in the front seat. I get really bad travel sick, so I try not to ever sit in the back seat if I can help it. What is the longest journey you have made by car? 
I once drove the whole of the east coast of Australia. Um, I can't remember exactly how far it was, but I think it was something like 2,000 kilometres. What do you do if you are stuck in a traffic jam? Uh, I guess that depends. If I'm driving, I probably will use that time to change the music. Uh, but if I'm a passenger, I'll probably just check my mobile phone, have a look at my social media accounts. All right, so those were four questions. If you remember, we have roughly 20 seconds for each question. So I had about 80 seconds available to give answers. How much time did I actually spend to give my answers using one or two sentences? 30 seconds. That is not a lot of speaking. If you think about it, it's less than half the available time that I had. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, in the real exam, the examiner would be able to ask you the follow-up question, why? But if you noticed, for most of those questions, I actually gave the reason why inside my two sentences. So actually, the examiner would not be able to ask me that follow-up question without sounding a bit crazy. Do we now think it's a good idea to answer every question in one or two sentences? I think the answer is obviously no, it is not a good idea. First of all, if you're only using one or two sentences, you're not showing the examiner the extent of your fluency. I have tested a lot of very, very high level students recently. Students who are not just aiming for a seven, but for an eight or even an 8.5 or nine. For those students, you want to start the test right from the beginning by showing the examiner just how fluent you are. Remember, for a high score for fluency and coherence, you have to show a willingness to speak at length. And that's not just for parts two and three, that should also be for parts one as well. I'm not saying that for each question in part one, you speak on and on and on and wait for the examiner to interrupt you. That's an equally bad problem. All I'm saying is for some of these questions, you're definitely going to want to give more than two sentences as your answer just to show your fluency. Plus, with such short answers, your scores for grammatical range and accuracy and lexical resource are also going to suffer. If you go back, you will see my sentence structures that I use there with the two sentences were very basic, just compound sentences or a simple first conditional. Again, if you need a six, that's fantastic. But if you're aiming for a higher score, you're gonna have to show the examiner more. You don't have a huge amount of time. You've only got 14 minutes. Make the most of part one. Because again, the more complex your answers are, the more vocabulary you're going to show the examiner and the more sentence structures. And that's what we need. So what's the solution then? If two sentences is not really enough, how many sentences should we use for part one? Should we use three? Should we use four? Should we use five? Well, my advice is very simple, but for some of you, it could be quite radical. The truth is you should take as many sentences as you need to answer the questions naturally. Some of the part one questions will naturally need a short response, one or two sentences, that is fine. But some other questions will naturally lead to you talking for longer. The key is being natural. If you've got more to say, that's specifically answering the question, say it. Don't feel like you're being constrained to always answering the question in two sentences. More importantly, I struggled when I was doing that example to answer all the questions only in two sentences. It is just not natural to count how many sentences you are using when you speak. And I want you to stop doing that today. All you should be focusing on in part one is listening to the question, checking you understand exactly what you've been asked, the tense you're going to need for your answer and then delivering an answer which is complete. If you need two sentences to do that, fine. If you need six, seven, eight sentences, 
fantastic. There is no limit. Nobody is counting the sentences. And trust me, if you answer naturally, you are definitely going to give yourself the best opportunity to get a high score. So why don't I do part one again, but this time I will just answer the questions naturally. Let's talk about traveling by car. Do you often travel by car? Oh, not very often, to be honest. Um, I recently moved to quite a small city and actually you can walk everywhere within 15 or 20 minutes. So there's no need for me to have a car. The only time I'm getting one is maybe once or twice a month when I get a taxi back from the train station. Do you prefer sitting in the front seat or the back seat of a car? Oh, 100% in the front seat. I suffer really badly from car sickness. Um, so I, I try not to get in the back seat if I can help it. What is the longest journey you have made by car? Ooh, about 20 years ago, I was backpacking in Australia and a friend, a friend and I, we bought a secondhand car and we drove it from Sydney, which is like on the south of the East Coast, all the way up to a city called Cairns, which is at the very top of the East Coast. And um, I can't remember how far it was, probably about 2,000 kilometres. It took us two months but we kept stopping i think if you drove it non-stop it would be about three or four days driving what do you do if you are stuck in a traffic jam oh um well i guess it depends if i'm driving i will probably use that time to change the music or maybe check where we're going uh on my phone using maps if i'm a passenger I'll probably already be checking my phone, but I might have an extra look. Um, or I might even use that opportunity to start a conversation with the driver. Can you see the difference? Talking naturally not only gives you more opportunity to show high level Lexus and grammar, it just shows the examiner how fluent you really are. Are. So if you've been counting sentences, I want you to promise to stop doing that today and to start answering questions naturally. And to help you do that, why don't we do a little practice? Find your phone and set a timer for four minutes, 45 seconds. Remember, we're not gonna do five minutes because the examiner will need 15 seconds to check your identity. And then when you're ready, in a moment, press play when I start asking the full 11 questions for task one. I want you to answer each question naturally. Don't worry about time, listen to the question, answer it, and when you've answered it, press play again so I can ask you the next question and do that. See how far you can get in the four minutes, 45 seconds. If you have finished the three questions about home or work and the first frame, and you're somewhere in the second frame when your alarm sounds that's perfect, okay? That's where we want to be. If when your alarm goes off, you're still on the second question, you've now gone too far. You are talking far too quickly. If you finish all of the questions and you've still got a minute left on the clock, you're not speaking for long enough. You're not giving yourself the best opportunity to show the examiner your level. So if you're ready, if you've got your clock, Let's go. In this first section, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. Let's talk about where you grew up. Which town or city did you grow up in? Do you think your hometown was a good place to grow up in? Would you like to live in the countryside in the future? Let's talk about advertisements. How often do you see advertisements where you live? Do you like seeing adverts on television? Has an advert on television ever made you want to buy something? Do you think it's a good idea to have adverts on the internet? Now I'd like to talk about presents or gifts. When do you give presents in your country? Do you find it easy to choose presents for other people? Have you ever given someone a present which you made yourself? Do you think it's important to give expensive presents? 
What have we learned in this lesson? We have learned that there is no correct amount of time for your answer to be in speaking part one. Some good answers are one or two sentences. Some good answers are six, seven, eight sentences. It just depends on the question. What your focus should be in speaking part one has got nothing to do with counting sentences. Your focus should be understanding the question, responding naturally, and showing the examiner your best range of language. You wanna make sure that your answer's in the right tense. You wanna try and use some topic-specific vocabulary. You just really, in that part one, want to show the examiner, hey, I'm here, I understand the questions, I can respond appropriately, I am a person who is worthy of a seven or higher. You're not gonna get that seven in part one, you're gonna get that throughout the test. However, you're gonna give yourself the absolute best chance if you're naturally responding to those first 11 questions, rather than giving kind of strange, robotic two sentence answers. All right, I hope you found today's lesson useful. If you did, as always, hit like, remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next Friday for another IELTS lesson. I'm Shelley, and this is my IELTS classroom. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you found the content useful, please click like to help the channel, and don't forget to subscribe for new lessons every Friday. Plus, you can find more expert content at www.myieltsclassroom.com.